Hi, everybody, and welcome to Spa Babies, presented by Stone Street. I'm Dan Ullman, along with Nicole Russo. Let's kick off closing week at the spa with a nice stakes race for our Spa Baby event for Wednesday. Race number eight. Here's the field for the P.G. Johnson. These are two-year-old fillies going a mile and a sixteenth on the inner turf. Nine entered for turf. The number 10, Fortuna Mia, is main track only. The number two, Virgin Colada, Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt, two-to-one morning line favorite, and showed off an impressive stretch kick to win her debut earlier in the meet yeah we've got a, a couple of horses who ran well earlier in the meet coming back here and that's one of the reasons these closing week stakes are so interesting you get to kind of bring everything together and if you've done your homework these are really interesting races to puzzle out the pg johnson has become a nice addition to the stakes schedule here late in the meet at saratoga it has winners like tap its fly harmonize both of whom went on to be grade one winners Let's start things off with the number one. She's Our Tiz. This is a New York bred by Munnings. $170,000 March purchase. Uh, distance shouldn't be a problem for this one. The dam won a couple of times on the dirt going longer. It's the family of champion sprinter Gold Beauty. And let's watch her debut against fellow New York breds. I thought she was very professional during the Belmont at the Big A meet, parking herself off of a fast pace and driving on home. Yeah, and came wide into the stretch and then edged away, ran on through the wire very professionally, as you said. Uh, a lot of dirt ability in this female family, but Munnings is a versatile son of Spitestown. I think that's perhaps where you're getting the turf ability from. I think you'll certainly get some route ability. Again, he's a very versatile sire in the damn one routing. You mentioned this is the family of champion gold beauty. That means it's also the family of champions like Deja and Sky Beauty, just a phenomenal female family. The number two is our morning line favorite. That's Virgin Colada, $110,000 private sale uh, at the yearling auction. 13% uh, turf routers for more than ready. He has been such a rock solid stallion for his entire career. They can do anything. The dam's a half to Catholic boy. He could do it both. A grade one stakes winner on dirt and turf. And just look at this late kick in the career debut for Virgin Colada. Off the pace, comes home powerfully, beats two next out winners, the third coming back to win with a 59 buyer. Yeah, and you mentioned Catholic Boy, winner of the Belmont Derby on turf, and then the Traverse. And what's interesting to me is that he was by more than ready. So this is a family cross that works. This is the penultimate crop for more than ready, who does everything well, but really his two-turn two-year-olds on turf. I mean, you've got Breeders' Cup winners, more than real pluck, rushing fall uh just a phenomenal rock solid stallion and virgin colada worked out a trip from the rail in a field of 10 in her debut so not so worried about the inside draw for her here the number three is good conduct this one going out for sheree devoe and jose ortiz by without parole a first crop sire let's talk a little bit about without parole yeah, without parole, a uh, group one winner at Royal Ascot, then came to the U.S. to be multiple grade one placed at a mile, including a third of the Breeders' Cup mile, a son of Frankel, uh, doing very well with his European two-year-olds. I believe he's up to eight winners now. Would be very interesting if, you know, Vert, if uh, Good Conduct, who just ran last Friday, August 23rd, does come back here. Entries for this Wednesday card were taken last Thursday before that race ran. I wonder if they entered here as a backup option in case Friday came off the turf before the big Saturday card. It's a good point to be sure. The dam's a half to competition of ideas. Let's watch Good Conduct second lifetime start. She was outrun sprinting in her debut, but showed much improved early speed in this race. She pushed the pace uh, set by Rare Art, the horse that was beaten by Virgin Colada when that one made her winning debut. She stayed on very gamely to fee second, uh, just second best. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it improved going from a sprint to a route, which I would certainly expect looking at the pedigree. Let's move on to the late number four, Lady Orient. This one's also entered at Kentucky Downs uh, later this week. She goes out for Tom Amos. Dylan Davis, who's red hot and continues to be so at Saratoga, takes them out. Liam's map is the sire. Big turf pedigree. The dams are half to Are You Kidding Me? Who could do it on turf and synthetic up in Canada? I like Lady Orient's career debut. She hopped at the start. She seemed a little bit green while in and among horses. Altered course down to the rail and somehow, someway won the bob. 
Yeah, and that was at Ellis Park where they've had some very nice two-year-olds debut this meet at an underrated program. With Liam's map on top and that route ability on the bottom, I do think she'll stretch out. Uh, as you mentioned, cross-centered at Kentucky Downs on Thursday, but did breeze at Saratoga last Friday. And Dylan Davis, just a phenomenal meet he's having at his hometown track, won six races during Traverse Week, including a pair of stakes on Sunday. Here's the number five, second chance, second time starter for Bill Mott, a New York bred by The Factor, 13% winners with turf route. Second chance is a half sister to the stakes winning dirt sprinter Foolish Ghost. And despite some dirt in the pedigree, second chance was ready to debut on turf. Let's watch this Mott trainee score going five and a half furlongs. I like the early speed she showed to park herself just off the early leader, and she is very game to win. Yeah, very game to the wire. And I think the turf ability in all that dirt in the family is coming from the factor, a son of Warfront, that versatile sire line. The factor adds a lot of speed to this equation as well as the turf ability. He's done it on all surfaces. Number six is Lemon Peppa Steppa. She's already stakes placed in her career. After winning her debut sprinting at Monmouth, she finished second in the Colleen a sprint race, and she was wired that day in a slow-paced race. Just maybe the race flow didn't work out for her. Good news is that her damn one going long on the turf. She's already foaled two winners. Uh, this one is by Caravaggio, and Caravaggio is just a solid European stallion. I think they can get a mile in a 16th. Absolutely. Caravaggio by the very versatile scat daddy, a crack turf sprinter himself, but he can sire a turf router as we've seen this season with Porta Fortuna in Europe and with White Beam, a repeat winner of the Diana during the Saratoga meet. Lemon Peppa Steppa, I thought a nice effort in the Colleen. No one was getting to the winner that day, but she made a nice little inside bid for Saka after having to study a little and picks up Javier Castellano as she comes to Saratoga. Although the number seven totally justified is still a maiden after two starts, you get the feeling that Rusty Arnold just gained some fitness for her by running her twice on turf, including one one-mile race at Ellis Park. Take a look at this turf pedigree by Triple Crown winner Justify, who's just been a super turf stallion. She's a half to master of Foxhounds, a good multiple grade two stakes winner, and the dam's a full sister to Breeders' Cup turf winner Magician. Yeah, I think this one is certainly bred for and met for the turf. Uh, Justify has sired champions already on both dirt and turf, uh, including last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf winner. So I think he can certainly get you a two-year-old turf router here. And of course, that female family that you mentioned, this one, although she is still a maiden, she took a step forward when going from a sprint to a mile at kind of that one and a half turn configuration at Ellis. I think she'll step forward again on turf for sure. The number eight is Marion Bright. This is a hard spun filly that was a debut winner at Colonial Downs going two turns from Michael Stidham. She didn't get a big figure in that race, but it's really hard to get a high buyer speed figure considering those slow fractions, 26 and three. 52 and change to the half. Marion Bright's had a very good trip in behind those horses, but she sprinted on home in a very professional fashion. I think she can run a lot faster. Yeah, I thought very encouraging how she finished up with those slow pace setters in front of her. You see there that she's from the family of Grace Hall, who won the spin away at Saratoga. Uh, but the dam of Make Mary and Grace Hall was a French stakes winner who also produced French Group 1 placed Ren's Day. So there's both dirt and turf in this very versatile family. Fitness shouldn't be an issue for the number nine, Raining Flowers. She already has two two-turn turf routes under her belt, including this victory at Saratoga going a mile and a sixteenth over the inner turf. And it's a very likable stretch rally. Johnny Velasquez, uh, who just won the Travers and continues to ride in phenomenal form. The Hall of Famer gave this one a beautiful trip. She broke from the outside post. You saw she saved ground turning into the stretch. Johnny gets her into the clear at just the right time. Yeah, and then finished up so well. Uh, you know, as you said, it was her third start. She's progressed a little every, she progressed a little from her first start to her second, but then took a big step forward, liked going two turns, liked Saratoga. There's a lot to like about her here.
Fortuna Mia, the number 10, is entered main track only. She stakes placed on the surface and would obviously be a contender if this race is washed off. Let's take a look at our top picks for the PG Johnson stakes. I like where you're going. That pedigree for Totally Justified speaks for itself. Yeah, I think she liked she liked going a route of ground. She's meant to run on the turf. I think as a maiden here, she'll offer some value in the wagering, could be more overlooked, even though her efforts have been very respectable. I want to play Lady Orient. I liked her debut. I thought she was a little bit green. The break wasn't there for her, but she was in and among horses. She checked in mid-stretch. She got down to the rail, and she really fired on home. Uh, Tom Amos having a pretty good meet, sending out some really live horses thus far. I think two turns will be well within her scope. 4693 for me. 7924 for Nicole. It's the PG Johnson Stakes, the Wednesday edition of Spa Babies, presented by Stone Street.